So you've hit level 80 and you're now sitting there wondering what you can do. Well, in Guild Wars 2, there are so many things that you can actually do after hitting level 80. And at this point, you just finished the tutorial. We will cover everything that you should do after hitting level 80 in an order that I feel makes sense. But you can do them in any order that you like. The whole game is yours to explore, so go crazy. Alright, first thing would be to complete the story, regardless of whether you have an expansion or not. This way, you can understand the ropes of your character on a deeper level now that you've hit the level 80 mark. You will also get into the nice lore that the game has to offer. I mean, compared to other MMOs, Guild Wars 2 probably has some of the best storytelling to date. This could be a bit subjective, but I personally liked it a lot, and I even did two playthroughs, once when the story arcs came live, and the other time because I just felt like it. Now, I'm not talking about the initial story of the game, but rather the ones from the expansions and the living world seasons. Okay, this might be a bit confusing, but allow me to explain. The story of Guild Wars 2 starts off at the core game, and it's categorized as your personal story. Then you have the living world seasons, which are small story arcs that are released between expansions, and they are basically there to fill in the gap. Those updates provide great value, including a story arc, maybe a new map, new features, skins, and much, much more. Lately though, this is no longer the case as ArenaNet, the developer, they set a goal to release an expansion on a yearly basis with split up updates that will happen on a quarterly basis. This way, the game will always stay fresh with new stories and places to explore. So apart from the living world, you have expansions, starting off with Heart of Thorns, Path of Fire, End of Dragons, and finally Secrets of the Obscure. The thing about Guild Wars 2 story is that it's a snowball. The farther into the story you get, the better it will become. If you're actually interested in the story, I recommend you do it in this particular order, starting from Living World Season 1 and ending with the expansion Secrets of the Obscure. Now, as you play the story, you will naturally accumulate some gear for your character. You will need this for the next step of your journey. If you aren't aware yet, there are two gear rarities that we care about. You have the Exotic and then the Ascended. As you progress early on into the game, you will not need the Ascended gear, so you don't have to worry about that just yet. Your main concern would be to get a set of exotic armor, which is literally only 5% weaker than Ascended gear is. So you won't feel left off far behind, DPS wise at least, if you don't own Ascended. The difference is that you can place an item called an infusion inside the Ascended gear, but more on that later. Anyway, exotic armor can be obtained in so many ways. You can get them from world vs world using a currency called Badges of Honor, which is naturally obtained as you play the game mode. You can also get them directly from the trading post. You will have to pay a maximum of 30 gold, let's say, but you will be set up for quite some time. You can also get them by using Karma, which is a currency that you will naturally get as you run dynamic events all over the world of Tyria. Whenever you see an orange circle on the map, run to it, complete it, and you will easily obtain some juicy juicy experience, loot, and karma. Anyway, to get it through karma, you will need to unlock the Cursed Shore map. Now, this map will be naturally unlocked after getting to a certain point in your personal story, and a full set of exotic gear can be purchased for 252,000 karma, which is a pretty good deal. Now obviously there are so many other ways, but your best bet and most efficient ways would be those three. I would personally go with the karma method if I had enough of it, and the trading post if not. You have to know that anything you get from karma and world vs world only covers the base stats and nothing from expansions. However, as a player learning the ropes, you will most likely need the berserkers gear for power damage type classes, and a rabid or rampager if you are playing a condition damage class, meaning classes that focus on inflicting burn, bleed, and other status effect damage. Now if you own any of the expansions and have already geared up, then your next step would be to unlock the elite specializations for your class. These specializations give your character a whole new kit to play around with, changes the class's playstyle, and allows them to equip a new weapon. Each expansion introduces a new elite specialization, with the exception to Secrets of the Obscure. If you already watched videos on your class and enjoyed a specific elite specialization, 
All you have to do is obtain hero points by completing hero challenges all over Etheria. Now those hero challenges are identified on the maps with this icon and they can be either a defeat, consume or interact type of challenge. You will need a specific amount of hero points to unlock additional skills and traits for your elite specialization. To get them, simply complete hero challenges all over Tyria. There is just one thing that you have to know and this is the fact that you get one hero point per challenge from the base maps that are outside the expansions and you will get 10 hero points from the ones within the expansion maps. The amount of challenges is obviously less and much harder as well in the expansion maps. Take Heart of Thorns for example. In this expansion, most of the hero challenges will require you to defeat a champion, which is a monster difficulty that should be taken on by a group of people and not solo, especially if you are a new player. You will face the most difficult challenges in this part of Tyria, so don't be too shy to ask for help in the map chat in case you need it, which most likely you will. Also, always keep an eye in the LFG under the Heart of Thorns tab as people will run hero challenge trains across all 4 maps in Heart of Thorns. Now fortunately, the challenges in the other expansions became much easier and solo friendly and if you want to rush unlocking your elite specializations, you can take on the ones in the Path of Fire and End of Dragon maps. Secrets of the Obscure does not have any hero challenges, at least as of this video, but this is most likely not going to change. One more last tip on this note, you can also obtain your hero points by consuming notarized scrolls. If you already played a lot of Red vs World during your level up process, then you will probably have a bunch of skirmish chests. Open them and take the testimony of heroics, then go to a heroics notary in any of the maps and buy any of the scrolls from there. Now that you're all decked out and are good to go when it comes to elite specs and gear, your next step would be to upgrade your movement. If you haven't already done so, then you should start by unlocking your glider. You can do that in either Heart of Thorns or End of Dragons. In Heart of Thorns, what you have to do is simply unlock the Gliding Basics Mastery. You will need one mastery point, and you can get that point by accumulating enough mastery experience. Simply play around the Heart of Thorns maps for an hour, or do an hour's worth of Heart of Thorns story, and you will get enough experience for one point. From there, just access your mastery tab, unlock the mastery, and then you can start using your glider by jumping from a cliff or any high place, and then pressing the jump key again while in midair. Now to get an end of dragons, all you have to do is go to any map within the Kantha region, which is a new part of the map that was introduced in end of dragons. To get there, Complete the story chapter called Old Friends. This is the second quest that you will come across after getting into End of Dragons. Or you can just use a teleport to a friend to instantly travel to a friend or stranger in a squad. Just make sure that they are in the Canthan region before you consume your teleport to a friend. The next means of movement would be mounts. If you already purchased an expansion while leveling up to 80, then you probably already have the Raptor. If not, then you can get it by completing this renowned heart in Crystal Oasis, which is the first map in Path of Fire, or from this one in New Kynang City. You should also get the Springer as you will need it to unlock other mounts. This guy can be obtained from these two renowned hearts located in Desert Highlands and New Kynang City. If you are interested in getting all the mounts, then you can check out this video, I have linked it in the description for your convenience. After getting the mounts and the glider, you will need to improve their capabilities by upgrading their mastery rank. This is an account-wide system and it allows you to further increase your quote-unquote level in the game. As of this video, there are 5 mastery lines, one for the core game and one for each expansion. Any experience you get after level 80 will be turned into mastery experience. With that, you can upgrade the glider masteries by completing events within the Heart of Thorn maps as the glider is tied to this expansion. You will also need to complete events within Path of Fire to upgrade the mount masteries as mounts are tied to this expansion. The only exception would be the Siege Turtle and this guy's masteries can be upgraded by obtaining enough mastery experience from the End of Dragons maps. One more thing you can do is use this chest from the Wizard's Vault but I am not sure if it will be there in the next rotation when the rewards change. 
So if it was there, great. Otherwise, you can skip this. You should also focus on this Corteria Mastery as it allows you to automatically loot anything and you won't have to worry about pressing F anymore. If you prefer flying rather than gliding, then you can get the Griffin and Skyscale mounts. The Griffin can go extremely fast and can be obtained after completing the story of Path of Fire, then finishing the Open Skies collection that will eventually get you the Griffin. The Skyscale though can hang itself on the wall and even elevate to higher places. And if you have Secrets of the Obscure, then this thing can shoot fireballs, which is kind of badass. Anyway, it can be obtained either by completing the Skyscale Rider collection from Living World Season 4, or the A New Friend collection from Secrets of the Obscure. Getting the Skyscale is much more important than the Griffin, as most players will be using this mount, and if you want to keep up with the groups running open world events, then you will need the Skyscale for yourself. Now that the fundamentals are out of the way, it is time to start diving into the endgame of Guild Wars 2. The first thing you will want to start looking at is Fractals of the Mists. These are dungeons that have increasing levels, and they start from level 0 and end at level 100. They are extremely rewarding, and they have a daily system tied to them. As a new player, you will start off at level 0 and work your way up to 100. Between levels 0 and 20, everything will be dandy, and you don't have to worry about anything extra. You can use your existing exotic gear and everything will be fine. After level 20 though, is where ascended gear will come into play. Remember when I talked about infusions? Yeah, this is when you will need to get those so you can proceed with higher fractal levels. I won't go deep into the system because once you get into fractals of the mists, you will automatically understand how it all works. Now, if you prefer more large scale instant PvE content, then you can participate in strike missions. They are basically a short encounter that revolve around you and 9 other players defeating a boss. The earlier strikes are much easier, but right now ArenaNet is ramping up the difficulty. You can say that this mode is something similar to raids, but it is a bit easier, it takes less time, and you will need a bit less organization to complete. Speaking of raids, you can also do raids if you enjoy this type of content, but you will need a decent group before you can actually take on this part of the endgame. Even though joining a random group in LFG is possible, people tend to look for experienced player. So your best bet would be to either look for training groups or a bunch of friends that are willing to learn together. From this game mode, you can also get legendary armor, which is what we will talk about later down the line and within the video. Now, if you manage to complete all the raids, fractals and strikes, then you can look at completing the challenge modes for each one. Activating this mode will make the fight 10 times harder than it already is. This will always need an extremely experienced group who knows the ropes, or an organized one who makes fights seem like a musical dance where everyone knows where to go and what to do. In challenge modes, there is less room for error, but if you're looking for a challenge, you should definitely look into those. Finally, let's make our way outside the instanced content and talk about world versus world. If you enjoy large scale combat featuring 300 players, 100 from each server, fighting over objectives using rams, catapults, trebuchets, cannons, or even arrow carts, then you should give this mod a try. Now, all this might sound cool, because it is. You can either roam around and defeat helpless players, or you can join a big group that is following a single commander to occupy as many towers, keeps, and camps and bring victory to your server. From this mode, you can get your hands on exotic, ascended, and legendary gear, which is extremely helpful if you want to gear alt characters. I also mentioned it before, but you can also gain hero points from this mode, so your future characters will no longer have to form hero challenges in the maps if it's not something that you enjoy. If you enjoy the PvP combat but prefer it to be a more less scale, then you can also queue up for 5 vs 5 or 3 vs 3 in either ranked or unranked game modes. This is a balanced mode where your PvE gear does not matter, everyone will be able to mix and match a given set of equipment, and everyone's stats is already maxed at level 80 with all skills unlocked, even if you are level 2. This game mode is very fun, and I used to play it a lot myself, but this is when I had my real life friends playing with me. We used to spend around 12 hours straight playing ranked. I remember one night, 
We stayed up all night and made our way from silver to platinum rank and we went on a 14 win streak. This was probably the most fun I've had in Guild Wars 2 PvP, but gone are the days. This was probably 7 years ago. Anyway, you will basically work with your team members to either defeat the other group or capture objectives and collect enough points to win the match. Just like any other game mode, you can also get juicy gear from PvP, so if you prefer playing this mode, you don't have to worry about falling behind on gear. Now there is obviously a lot more to do in Guild Wars 2, but if you are planning out your journey as a new player, the above is what you need to know on a high scale. This is enough to keep you going for hundreds of hours. However, if you are looking for more, then you can work on getting your legendary gear, which includes armor, weapons and accessories. This gear allows you to change the stats of a given piece of equipment at any point in time. You can also use that legendary gear on any character by creating copies of it as long as they are the same weight. This means that if you have a light armor legendary gear, then any light armor class can make a copy of it. Accessories can also be obtained and this is what you should probably focus on initially because they can be used by any class regardless of their armor weight. And they can also be copied on literally every character that you have. But if legendaries are not your thing, you can even go on achievement hunting if you like to flex those numbers or prefer to go on different adventures every day. You can go fishing if you want to relax while still making some gold. You can join a role playing guild or community and show off your fashion skills. Or you can, you know, do something like this. Everything is possible in this game. It's just a matter of how you use all the features that are offered and how much you want to invest in the game. So, if you are still confused after watching this video, leave your concerns or questions in the comments. Anyone in the community or I will definitely try to answer them. Anyways, that's it for today. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.